scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Romans chapter 8 and verse 13. And then we'll look at Galatians chapter 6 verse 8. Romans 8 13. One to read. It's projected. One to read. Let's start again. For if ye live after the flesh, I told you what the flesh is. A way of living. A way of thinking. Are we together? It says ye shall what? But if ye through the spirit, so you will mortify, but an agency will empower you. You are engraced, but the doing is you. I told you that grace has dimensions. Not all dimensions of grace work automatically. There is saving grace. You don't do anything. You just receive. There is grace that empowers you to do. You participate. The disciplinary dimension is your responsibility. If ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, what will happen to you? Please talk to me. You shall live. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 8. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I mean bribery like corruption, political party. Corruption means death. Death, period, in one word, death. But he that soweth to the spirit, a man can sow to the flesh, a man can sow to the spirit, both are soils, and the Bible guarantees that the harvest is waiting for you. When you walk in bitterness, you are sowing. Oh, dear farmers, listen to me. You walk in bitterness, you are sowing. I'm born again. But what is this guy trying to show me? And you are sowing. And the Bible says a harvest will come. You don't, you don't walk with your wife. You are fighting your wife. You are sowing to the flesh. The harvest is that your heavens will be closed. The Bible said so. You are born again. You are anointed. But for being unwise in treating your wife, you pay the price with a closed heaven. That tight open. And then your disobedience shuts the heavens again. So a titan wife Peter is plus one minus one. What's the answer? Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. One of the ways to sow to the flesh is to think that God is an expert in inconveniencing and rubbishing your life. You know, many believers believe that when you hand over your life to God, it's a call to stupidity, especially our generation. What is this you and church? Come, darling. What is you? Are, you, are, you are a fine lady. You are a wonderful lady. I mean, there's a, a rich man somewhere. What is this church thing? They are turning your head. Don't mind this stupid apostle around. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. A man can sow to the flesh, and I promise you, whether you stop, whether you scatter the soil, it will still grow because they are all fertile soils. Could it be? That many people, although the demons were casted, 
the discipline of conformity discipline the spirit of God will empower you but you must see the value of waking up in the night to pray as a principle that helps you confirm are we together don't sit down there and say Lord the grace is not there it's raining this night is so cold and you just fresh you are not serious you have to speak you have to create your reality someone can meet you and say my dear you are a very beautiful lady there is a bar around God has granted you the grace you use your mouth and say no you can say well Let's see how things go. You have sown to the flesh. There is a harvest coming. When you get tipsy and a truck jams you, that's the harvest. When you snuff Dramadol and you lie down by the bridge and Mopol comes to carry you and they jail you for five years. What? That's called harvest. Say harvest. Shout it. Say harvest. It doesn't matter how it came. Listen. This is not being under the law. Get the point. This is not being under the law. God is not a fool. He works with us physically. If God tells me to bless you, watch this now. If God tells me to give you 10,000, if I say come and collect, why do you come? Why do you get up and come and stretch your hand and say thank you? You are participating. It took discipline for that to happen. Are we together? Let me tell you this. God can speak and say, Pastor Alpha, you will be a mighty man. If you don't have the discipline of constraining yourself to conform to that word, you will keep seeing yourself raising wheelchairs in your dream till you die. You will never see it. There is nothing in the kingdom that does not require discipline. He said, he that warreth is not, he that strives for mastery he says he's not crowned except he strives lawfully. There is no gift of fasting. Hello? Have you ever seen it in the Bible? There is no gift of... Whoever lied to you that fasting, your stomach will not... You will hear all kinds of noise while you are praying. You have to choose between the noise and your destiny. It's the discipline of conformity. Lord, if I stop fasting now, and this grace goes down. What of the people that will be blessed? No, I receive grace. I will pray. You think those who get up in the night and pray and those who fast, just a, a supernatural wind just blew somewhere. No, sir. I'm sorry to say this, but our generation is a very indisciplined generation. That's why we don't become successful. We don't take anything serious. Not just God. Even our destinies. Are we together? You start a business. You open your shop by 12. You close it by 4 at will. You may have a bottle of olive oil in that shop. I guarantee you, you will still fail. Because there is no discipline. Father, if it be thy will take this cup of me but nevertheless nevertheless it is within my power I have the power to lay it down I have the power to take it up I have the power to keep quiet I have the power to speak when they talk against you you have the power to keep quiet so that God will now arise and fight let's not throw everything to God and just make a fool out of our lives you have the power to be disciplined God has anointed you to be a good worship minister. You need to be disciplined to wake up in the night to pray and receive songs. And write and edit and receive songs. As a man of God, you are called, you need to be disciplined to sit down and take notes and research materials. Do you know, let me tell you sincerely, Jordan is here and he will tell you, do you know how many books I read just for this, this series? You won't believe it. I listen to more than 11 to 15 ministries. Different perspectives. Not because I don't know anything about it. Why will you read so many books just for a series? Everybody say discipline. Please shout it. I know you don't like it. Say discipline. Nothing just happens like that. This is where many of us miss it. There is a dimension of deliverance called the discipline of conformity 
you constrain yourself on the strength of what you are looking at there's too much distraction you want to be great but anything goes oh someone is marrying somewhere i need to run and go yet god is calling you a man of god you have a conference in two days you are there one naming ceremony there you are there again to cut uh, to, to to one of you are, you are just moving up and down and then you wonder why the power of god does not come discipline there are times i am so tired humanly speaking let me tell you sometimes you see it i can be so tired the last two weeks i've been ministering every day back to back you think if I have if I have my way, what do you think I, I want to be doing now? Just find somewhere, somewhere and, and throw away my phone and, and shut my ears and sleep. It's called discipline. Yes, there is grace. But let me assure you, if you are not disciplined, you are abusing the grace of God. There are many funny graduates around just waiting and believing that with, with indiscipline and carelessness, they don't pay attention to conform to the terms of success. Insult anybody and believe they will prosper. My father is this. No respect for authority. No respect for anything. The discipline of conformity. Philippians chapter 3. We'll read from verse 12 to 15. Philippians chapter 3. Not as though I had already attained. This is Paul. Either were already perfect. The word perfect there is the word mature. But I follow after that if I may apprehend that for which I am also apprehended of Christ Jesus. 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. One of the sponsors of indiscipline is an arrival mentality. The moment you believe you have arrived, the deception of little results, the deception of little success. One thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and doing what? Reaching forth onto those things that are before me. 14. I, the first two words, please speak to me. I, Remember, this was the guy that taught us the Pauline epistles. I press. I press. Have you read that place that the Bible says to walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling? I press towards the mark. I press. I press towards the prophetic word. It is true that God has told me you are a deliverer in this family and the grace has come that grace will make sure I must be on fire so I press I wake up in the night Shaka patakata. Lord the mantle for the deliverance of this family is in my hands while they are sleeping they can sleep but I press let every other name fade away Let every other name fade away. Ah. Let every other name fade away. Listen. Listen. It will take you engaging prophecy through discipline. Otherwise, it will never come to pass. The ministry you have seen in the spirit, no matter how many demons are casted out of you, if you don't cooperate with the spirit to come to conform you will never have it you can sit down and see yourself building building an estate i saw an estate and i saw a spirit behind the estate apostle joshua selman can say in the name of jesus that spirit go the spirit has gone but you do not sustain the discipline to sit down that discipline may mean upgrading your mind that discipline may mean you sitting and speaking every day. That discipline may mean you telling certain friends, look, I'm in a new season. I love you. I know we're from the same background, but honestly, I must leave you now. Discipline, I can tell you this from experience. You will never do business with God if you ignore discipline. I think. 
Don't just think, no, you have a right to do whatever you want to do. It takes discipline to sit down and count the money and say in the name of Jesus, I know that I, I have what it takes to complete this nice shirt, but in the name of Jesus, I choose to say no. I love my tomorrow more than my yesterday. I love my tomorrow more than today. Spirit of the living God, I will, I will, I will walk with you. I discipline myself. It's better to be hungry today than to eat tomorrow's food today. Are we together? The next time you admire someone with a mighty hand of God, let me tell you, among the many parts of the equation, don't just say he's lucky. There is discipline. I say this with all humility and not to brag. When I stand here by 7, I live here by 12. Almost every Friday. It takes discipline. Do I have to do it? If I say I'm not seeing anybody, nobody's going to even say, Apostle, you have tried. I come and stand here and I go back home and it's not sleep that I'll sleep. Sometimes by five, I have to be up to catch a flight. Say discipline. Don't just say, Kai, God is increasing these people. Discipline. It takes discipline to see God's money and leave it there. Really rest upon your shoulder. I remember a few years ago, we went to a particular hotel, very nice hotel, went for a ministration. And I was preparing for the meeting. The hotel had swimming pools, had a lot of things. And these were wonderful people. I mean, when these guys saw this swimming pool, they were happy. They just went, they were swimming, they were playing table tennis. I was just watching them from my And I laughed. The luxury. But somebody is coming three hours later crying and say lord will you change my destiny and i swim away that person's miracle <laughs> there is a time to swim now it's not the time don't get me wrong there is a time to swim are we together discipline there are times that i go to minister somewhere and they prepare a very serious honorarium. And God says, don't collect it. Bless the people. Say discipline. It takes discipline to obey. Lay your hands on your head and say, Lord, take in discipline out of my life forever. Pray. Shabakato sadabalakata. Discipline of conformity. to take my destiny seriously the grace to take my assignment seriously the grace to take the destinies of others seriously that through discipline I can cast out devils from my life discipline in waking up early discipline in studies discipline this one thing I do Forgetting the things that are behind. I press by faith as a sign that I believe my future. Hallelujah. Listen, please sit down. Thank you. If these three levels of deliverance doesn't happen to you, forget about possessing your possession. The spirit may be casted out, but your mindset will allow it to stay. Do you know, for someone, you don't have any spirit in you, but this is the access point. For others, just discipline. God told you that there is something you have to read in a book. You bought that book since January till today, and the spirit of God is waiting for you. And you are saying, Lord, you've not brought your word to pass. And God said, no, 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 no. I answered you since January. The indiscipline to sit down. I will go to Jordan's bookstore tomorrow. Uh, Jordan, is this book around? It will arrive next week. You don't follow up. All successful people, whether in the secular or in this, even those who drink and smoke, they are disciplined. Forget all that acting they do. They are very disciplined. Disciplined with money. 
There are people like that. God has casted the devourer, but in discipline. You collect a salary of 30,000. You carry your friends immediately to a restaurant and blow up 20,000 and wonder why the spirit of poverty still remains. Discipline. As a student, you are wearing a uniform of 10,000, 20,000, and all your parents give you in a month is 5,000. Same discipline. That's right. In discipline. I don't cook. You are a student. I don't, it's not, I'm, I'm, it's not my thing. This, this, our pride is what, in Africa especially, is why these spirits never let us go. What of our parents? The discipline of getting, blessed. oh, sir, um, God is going to touch you, but can you be disciplined and just wait? Um, I'm not, I, I can't do that. I can't, I, I, you want life to bless you at your own terms. That's a joke. Who for the joy that was set before him? What did he do? Endured. Endurance takes discipline. Have you seen people in a gym? Someone in a gym trying to work out. Have you seen people laughing in a gym? Except if they are producing videos for you to buy. But if, if they are in a gym, meaning be carrying all those things, look at the world heavyweight. Their faces become ugly. And yet they are determined. While he's doing that, he's seen the trophy already. You need to see something that gives you the strength to not be distracted. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in your family where all the women marry terrible and unserious men watch this now now it is true that you have been delivered that spirit was casted out are we together please hold on and then God now helps you to think well and then God says wait until my will comes what does he tell you wait until my will comes but in discipline your body is itching all of a sudden one irresponsible guy just appears from nowhere and says um, uh, you know how things are don't keep waiting like this and you stand and God is telling you the choice is yours do you know if you get up you know the man is smoking you know he's drinking he says I don't smoke all the time once in a while I say okay I can make do with that remember you are making a choice through indiscipline and God is watching but I'm supposed to deliver you I'm, I'm bringing you out I'm using you as a specimen and you say, God, I can't wait again, please. I can't wait. If, if by March or by, by August, this guy, whoever shows up, the devil said, what did you say? Fine. Whoever shows up. And he will just go and drag one funny guy. And just because the guy is in church and he wore a tie and, and talking with belt, does not mean that he's serious. And before you know it, through indiscipline. Are we together now? Through indiscipline, you now say, yes. I will marry you. Your father will say, I'm, I'm sensing that you are in danger. I said, Daddy, don't worry about me, please. Age is not on my side. And you marry and you find out that the same thing that happened to your elder sister has now happened. It was not the spirit. The spirit was casted. You paid the price to get a correct mindset. The information for your deliverance has been given. But the discipline of conformity was not there. Shout, I will wait. One of the hardest things for believers to do is to wait until the hand of God comes to assist you. This is not just in the issue of marriage. In the issue of job, God says, stay, I will direct you. The next thing you just hear that, okay, there's something somewhere. And you say, Kai, I don't, I'm ashamed. The last time I went for a wedding, I saw all my classmates. They were all in cars. And me, they were even asking, what are you doing? Pastor, you are still like this. And the next thing you jump. When, when the devil wants to destroy some people, he will make sure you get visa to US. Whereas your, the will of God for you is in Nigeria. And you smile your way to US out of the program of God. It takes discipline. It would never have been my desire to be in Zaria by this time. No. Oh God, you are.
the chain of poverty finally that people don't rise in this family that there is a cause and a yoke that a time can come in a believer's life where like Jesus you say it is finished complete deliverance yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir the cause can go yes sir the barrenness can go the failure the retrogression I saw my father go down I saw my mother go down so there is a way out in Christ Jesus the son of the living God said it is finished he opened a new and a living way a pathway that a man can obtain complete deliverance not up today and down tomorrow Hallelujah. Be sensitive. Sit down. We are not, not praying yet. That's why we kept the oil here. Because the oil too is hearing the sermon. I want to show you a mystery. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It is this revelation that makes deliverance a mystery. From part one to three to four. This is where we are coming to now. Listen and pay attention. And let me tell you. I want to show you how I was delivered. Get ready for my... I want to show you what worked for me. I am a testament of this. I would never be where I am today until God himself revealed this by his spirit. And I want to show you complete deliverance. Complete deliverance. I, truly, I came with my heart open. I cried to God and I said, Lord, this, this thing has to go. Everybody shout it is finished. Shout it again it is finished. This is Jesus speaking. Not angel Michael. It is finished. So he gave me access that it is possible. Oh look how healing this is. And to me did you know? Look some of you here as I'm talking now. You are just thinking of the mess in your background. That you have been crying and say, Lord, it's just more deliverance I need. Hold on. Some of you here have counseled you. You come from backgrounds where your parents were priests directly. Not that they went to priests. Directly. There are territories here that were dedicated to all kinds of devilish idols. It is finished. I found this years ago. I told you about demons oppressing me. This simple scripture you see. When God shined it in my spirit. I was reading a book really. That's where it came from. But I said Lord I, I, I don't know. But this is what I'm seeing. And then God broke this thing down. That I'm about to show you. Sit down. Sit down. Let's learn. We're going to pray. Experiencing complete deliverance. The first thing I want to talk about quickly and then I will show you the three ways is I want to teach you the legal system of the kingdom very quickly. The realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Please listen carefully. The, the realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 2. Mighty God, 26 and verse 2. Read with me. As a bird by wandering, and as the swallow by flying, uh -huh. so the curse, causeless, underline causeless, shall not come. Meaning, if there is no cause for it, it should not have come. If you ever saw any limitation in your life, there is a system of authorization because there is a law in the spirit that when a thing does not have a reason to come it does not come so the barrenness the failure everything has a reason a curse causeless cannot come if it ever came something authorized it there is the legal system of the kingdom redemption as we know was done on legal grounds. Jesus did not just come 
the bible says the soul that sinned it shall die it's a law god himself had to submit to that law are we together it says without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins so the son of god did not just become a man and came to the world no the bible says by one man sin entered so it could not take a spirit to save men it had to be a man jesus had to be a man i want you to see the legalities that the son of god went through are we together jesus had to be 30 years to start his ministry because in jewish custom if you were less than 30 you were not considered a man so it wasn't about his spiritual life he had to wait and go through it until he was 30. jesus could just fall from the sky like elijah that people say elijah the tishbite but jesus had to grow in a woman's womb and was born and cried and could die and grew from a young baby to a young child teenager adult and all of that he passed through it there is a legal system in the kingdom let me show you something isaiah 41 verse 20 and 21 the verse of emphasis is 21 isaiah 41 that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this and the Holy One of Israel has created it. Read 21 for me. One, two, read. Aha. Uh -huh. This looks to me like a lawyer's language. This is the Lord speaking. Produce your cause. Bring the legal terms. Bring before me. So Abel said, I will produce my cause. And the blood went to heaven and said, God, have you not said whoever destroys man, whoever kills by the, lives by the sword shall die by the sword? I did not live by the sword and now somebody has slain me. My blood was cried and God came and said, Cain, your brother's blood is crying. And he said, am I my brother's keeper? I said, don't talk that nonsense. Blood is crying. The legal system of the kingdom. God, as kind as he is, is teaching us how to make him bless us. And he said, when you pray, ask me to give you this day our daily bread. Otherwise, you will never eat it. This is God. Son of man, say to these dry bones, I'm waiting for you. If you don't say it, it may never happen. I, the dry bones did not move at the word of God. It moved at the word of God through the mouth of a man. He says, say to this dry bone, the dry bone, ah, you are now talking. No. Bring forth your strong, how many reasons? Bring forth your strong reasons why you think you should be the first graduate in your family. Bring forth your strong reasons as to why you think that you should not fail in life. Look at me. You saw people went to school and the devil taught them like a lion. Bring forth your strong reason. Why you are the last born in your family and you believe that like Joseph, you are the one who will feed them. Bring forth your strong reason. I, when I saw this years ago, I said, my God, Shalakatokaya. Bring forth your strong reason. Don't just sit down and think it will happen. There is the legal system of the kingdom. The legal system of the kingdom. The legal system of the kingdom. So let me teach you three steps now. Number one. You want to experience complete deliverance. Your first assignment is to break the legal hold of Satan. And all the demonic powers over your life. Or your family or your church or your destiny. Whatever it is. The first assignment is to break the legal hold of Satan. Break the legal hold. A curse causeless shall not stand. Barrenness causeless shall not come. Failure causeless shall not come. Delay causeless shall not come. If it is there, something is authorizing it. Your first assignment is to break the legal ground. This is where, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to the powerful mystery of the blood. 
I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, my precious blood. I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood, eternal saving blood. Listen, when you are about to face the gates of darkness as a final onslaught, there is no other weapon that you can carry. The first weapon for true victory is the mystery of the blood. The blood. The blood. The blood. Five scriptures very quickly. Matthew 26 verse 27 to 28. Matthew 26. Matthew 26, 27 to 28. And he took the cup and gave thanks. And he gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament. The blood is done, is what? Is shed for many. Why? For the remission. Remission. So a system has been initiated in the spirit. Remission. The word remission means to blot out. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. Ephesians 1 verse 7. Then we look at Colossians 1 14. Read with me please. 1, 2, read. In whom we have redemption. How? So how does redemption happen? Please talk to me. Redemption. Redemption. Through the blood. The forgiveness of sins. It didn't say the forgiveness of your sins. It doesn't matter whether it's your sins. Our fathers have sinned. There is a system. I used to think he said forgiveness of your sin. No. There is a mystery of atonement. Notice for those of you who cast out demons. Sometimes you see those. They just shout and talk. I won't go. No, 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 no. The blood for the forgive. Whatever ill. To sin means to miss the mark. Whatever happened around my life, whatever happened around my lineage that authorized darkness, there is a system of atonement. According to the riches of his grace. 1 verse 14, Colossians. Colossians 1 verse 14. Once again, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the word. I hope you know there is a law in the spirit that when you see the travail in the soul of your offender, your heart will be appeased. Look at this. Come, Sheo. If Sheo steals my handkerchief and they catch him, my satisfaction is in his punishment. Is that true? As they punish him, I now feel appeased. If they don't punish him, I feel bad. So the Bible says he shall see the travail of his soul. Who is the he? Not Jesus. Man in Christ. Because it was at the point of exchange. We offended the father. And according to this law, there is a requisite level of punishment that must have peace the heart of the offender. And Jesus said, instead of you and your father, let me stand in for you. So while they beat him and blood came out, the father watched, took his face away. And then the Bible tells us that he was seeing the travail. That means the yoke and the ordinances that they did. Remember, they murdered missionaries in your village. And ordinarily, until these things happen and they kill everybody based on that, because their blood cries. But then, God in heaven will see those who offended the grandfathers that made the cause to come upon the family in Christ. The travail. And the father says, that's enough. I set you free. It is finished. Redemption through his blood. Even, so there is a kind of redemption called the forgiveness of sins. That your wrongs, your sins... 
if sins are forgiven then the consequences they bring are also forgiven and the authorizations they give is also forgiven are we together Revelation chapter 5. Just follow me closely. Jesus grant us grace tonight. We have to be fast. Revelations 5, 9 and 10. Quickly please. Revelations 5, 9 and 10. And they sung a new song. Saying. Thou art worthy to take the book. And open the seals thereof. Uh -huh. For thou was slain. And has redeemed us. Unto God. How? By your blood. Out of every kindred and every tongue and every and every these are the four realms where causes exist. Look at this. Please go back to verse 9. Out of every kindred, every tongue, every people, every nation, everything was covered. We were redeemed by his blood. I hope you know that God ensured that Satan participated in the death of Jesus. That was the only way that the blood of Jesus could hunt him. When Cain killed Abel, who did Abel's blood hunt? So whoever killed Jesus is the person who the blood of Jesus should hunt. Had they known this, they would not have crucified who are the day? Satan alongside the principalities and powers. Satan, God made sure in his wisdom that they all participated in the death of the son of the living God. And then verse 10, he says, he has made us a kingdom of priests unto our God that we reign on earth. The last scripture, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10 to 11. Popular scripture. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now is come salvation and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the, not the heathen, the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Next verse. And they, he had been cast down, but to appropriate the benefit of what has happened, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They overcame him. They overcame him. They overcame him. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Listen, listen. The moment the mercy of God steps in, I've told you this. The moment the mercy of God steps in over an issue, my brother, my sister, listen to me. You know that car they call end of discussion. It truly is end of discussion in the spirit. The moment the blood factor comes in, notice that when the blood was put on the lintel of the people, it had nothing to do with their personal belief in God's deliverance. The moment the angel of death saw blood, even if it was Pharaoh, if Pharaoh's son entered one of those rooms where there was blood, he wouldn't have died. Even if he was cursing God from the room. The same stiff-necked people that cursed God later on were in that room. But because there was a covering of the blood, so every time we engage the blood, many believers don't know how to engage the blood. To engage the blood is not just to shout, I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood alone. Are we together? It looks like it's drizzling or rain or so. Please, if it is, just let the people find a way of stationing them around. We're, we're about to pray, so we'll find a way of making it happen. Are we together now? Everybody say the blood. So the first mystery that brings deliverance is the blood. When I had this revelation, I began to pray. And let me tell you, that was when I found the mystery of Psalm 51. They gave you that scripture. Psalm 51 was something that I forgot about that scripture many years. It was this year that God reminded me again. Psalm 51. Please give it to us. Our time is gone. Let's see how we can.
do justice. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression too. Let's just run it. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Three, for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Four, against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Listen, let me tell you. You can carry your family and in covenant stand as you make. This is not just about one man. It can be one business. It can be one family. It can be one church. Many believers will not believe this. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Verse 5. You can read it down, down, down. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. And you read this scripture and cry the mercy of God. Listen to me. Nineveh was a land that was so depraved. When God sent Jonah, Jonah said, God, I'm not going. He said, I know you. I know you. I want to allow this thing remain so that you will be angry and curse these people. I know that if I talk to them, you are merciful. They will now repent and you will act as if they didn't do anything that warranted punishment. And he ran away. He ran away for a justifiable reason. There was something about God that he knew. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. The Bible says he is slow to anger. So if my father or my mother went to sacrifice a baby and drain the blood to send me to school and now there is a spirit that stands on legal ground, I can stand before God and knock on the door of mercy and say, Lord, I know that the soul that sins, it shall die. But do men die twice? Is it not appointed one for man to die? And after that, the judgment. And Lord, your son has died. And what judgment? No one condemns you if you are in Christ. And you stand on that legal ground. And God says, done. Done. It may have been 30 years, but done. Lord, I went to a herbalist myself because I was looking for a wife or husband. Lord, I went by myself. I wanted to pass exams. I went to Zaria City. I went and did this and that. Lord, I know that I did all of this. And you stand before him. And then the blood speaks. Every time the father sees the blood, Satan sees judgment. Every time you point the blood. To plead the blood does not mean to chorus it like a charm. To plead the blood means to bring to remembrance. It's not just saying, I plead the blood. To plead the blood is a revelation. Bring to the Father's remembrance the substitutionary work of Christ. And that the blood, the sinless blood of his eternal son that was given in exchange for my deliverance. Mm. That's the first thing I did. And that's the first thing anyone must do. If all you keep doing is in the name of Jesus, I'm free, you're in trouble. Pleading the blood entails a broken and a contrite heart. You see, let me tell you, there is a level of repentance that brings the hand of God to a man. It's not this arrogant, I plead the blood, Lord, just get up and break 250 years yoke of killing people in my, in my village in the name of Jesus. After all, you died. No. A broken, there is an attitude that makes the blood effectual. Are we together? The fact that the Bible says we should come boldly does not mean it says we should come arrogantly. Lord, I stand before you and I know that on my own I will never be able to make it. I watch my mother cheat people. I watch my father cheat people. I watch my siblings cheat people. Somebody lost a job because of his wickedness. It is true that as a family we deserve this. But Lord, I stand on behalf of my family. If my people, which are called by my name, although they are called by my name, it is not automatic. They must humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their evil ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. And I said, Lord, it's a deal. 
And I cried. I would never forget that night. Lord, let your grace and your mercy speak for me. My grandfather served you until he died. Even on his deathbed, he died for Jesus. In your anger, remember mercy. Lord, if you leave me the way I am, I will never make it in life. Lord, can the dead praise you? Let me show you how people touch the heart of God. Lord, if you take my life now and you allow witchcraft to kill me, like it killed everybody in my family, can the dead praise you? Lord, if I give birth to children out of witchcraft, you are presenting your strong reasons. Lord, is it not you that has said you are a merciful God? I stand before you without argument. And God arises from heaven. Many believers do not know how to touch the mercy of God. It was the psalmist that would write everything he did on behalf of Israel and say they should make a poem out of it. Let us with a glad soul mind praise the Lord. He said, for his mercies endure. He's ever faithful, he's ever sure. He will even say, Sila, think about it. I didn't go to God with a bold face as a man of God to say, God, let me tell you something. My grandfather was a pastor. I love you. I, 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 I don't drink beer. I stand before you in my self-righteousness. Is that pride that kills people? Someone must go down on his knees and say, Lord, a cause causeless shall not stand. There is a reason why we are failing in this family. There is a reason why doors are not opening in this family. And Lord, I stand before you. Who else will I run to, oh God? Will you let men? See, be like the saints of old. They knew how to talk to God. Lord, will the living, will the dead praise you? If you pay me, if you do this, do you want them to say you brought people out of Egypt but could not take them to the promised land? And the Bible said God repented. Have you heard that he said, come, let us reason together. That tonight someone can say, God, will the unrighteous and the righteous receive the same reward? What then is the value of your blood? And you would think you are joking and God is listening to you. Lord, is it a crime that I came from the north? Must I fail the failure? Is it a crime that I'm an Igbo man? Must I fail that failure? Is it a crime? I came from a Muslim background. Now I'm born again. It is true that I went to all kinds of Alpha and the rest. But Lord, will I receive the recompense of sinners? Bring before him your strong reason. And cry for his mercy. I did that. You appropriate the mercy of God in your life. Number two. In complete deliverance, you cannot downplay the power of words. Write it down. The power of words. Your words are a vital tool in establishing the victory of Christ over your life and situation. Matthew chapter 22. And verse 37. Please let's hurry up. I already sense fire burning in this place. We'll do this thing very fast and we'll pray. Mm. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. Jesus said unto him, Matthew 20, chapter 12, 12, verse 37. Matthew 12, verse 37. For by thy words. Thou shalt be justified. I will tell you what words. It's not any words. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. You know what the words are? Let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Let those who have become benefactors of his blood make that announcement in the realm of the spirit that Satan you heard my conversation with the king of glory and it is unto him I have sinned and he has decided to show me mercy. Therefore, I decree and declare that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare that I'm free from all of these chains. The Bible says declare ye. It looks simple. We make declarations without appropriating the blood and the mercy of God. When it has to do with deliverance, the blood opens the door. And then your words 
you sound that word to principalities and powers words there's a reason why there was an echo it is finished jesus didn't have to say it he said it for a reason and the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom there is a new and living way that we can step in i remember the lord asking me to speak and say son begin to speak and denounce yourself from every walk of darkness and i began to pray i've obtained mercy i blot myself out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against me in the name of the lord jesus i obtained forgiveness i've been called out of every tongue i thought it was a joke until my life began to change in a remarkable way words are powerful for with the heart you believe and if you believe the blood speaks for you then with the mouth confession will be made you don't keep quiet the redeemed of the lord speak the righteousness that is of faith speaks and then number three complete deliverance the ministry of the anointing yes sir yes sir the anointing Luke chapter 4 17 to 21 let's look at how Jesus announced his deliverance ministry the messianic prophecy and there was delivered to him the book of prophet Isaiah and when he opened the book he found the place where it was written 18 Please, let's hurry up. The spirit of the Lord, he's about to deliver now. And he's showing us. So before anything, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he had helped me, anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to preach the, the to heal the brokenhearted. He had anointed me to preach deliverance to the captives. He has anointed me to recover sight to the blind he had anointed me to set at liberty them that are bruised 19 he had anointed me to preach the acceptable year of the lord 20 we are reading to 21 and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all that were in the synagogue were fastened on him 21 and he began to say unto them this day when talk to me this day say this day that means from today don't be surprised when you see people free is what he was telling them he said i just read it meaning if you see demons flying it's because an anointing is upon me and today that ministry starts this is what jesus was telling them he opened the book and showed them he said i'm showing you from the book so you are not surprised when you see a woman bound for 18 years all of a sudden free this day i have come as a fulfillment of that scripture today somebody's this day because the book has been opened it is this day the day the book is open that's your this day the spirit of the lord because he had anointed me anointed me Isaiah 10 27 Isaiah 10 27 this day this day this day and it shall come to pass when notice that everything happens in a day it shall come to pass in that day what day the day your faith chooses that day the Bible says if you if you hear his voice this day there remaineth a rest for the people of God that his burden shall be taken away somebody will come and carry it away that means it never will belong to you again notice two things that will be taken a burden and a yoke and the Bible says and his yoke from off thy neck he say and the yoke mashana katos kabarakatos the yoke shall be destroyed not because you are tired of it because of the anointing there is an exact anointing that breaks yoke it didn't say because of an anointing 
there is a particular anointing. Now, let me tell you this. Not every anointed man can deliver you. This is what I want you to get. There is the anointing, an exact kind of anointing. Just because a man of God prayed for you, I'm telling you this, believe me. There is an anointing specifically ordained by God. The same way there is an anointing that prospers. The same way there is an anointing that heals. There is a dimension of the anointing that is allocated for detonating yokes. Like a bomb that is supposed to scatter somebody that was put by a wicked man somewhere and you come and do something to it and then it becomes like toy. Like a piece of paper. How do you know you are delivered? Strange results. Instant results. Instant open doors. Let me tell you. Deliverance is one of the things that happen instantly. My life changed like day and night. If I did ministry without this encounter, I would have been in for a rude shock. I found it. That there was a burden on my neck. There was a yoke. A burden on my shoulder. And a yoke from my neck. I remember going to my village and passing around. And seeing well-meaning people. Poor people. I saw how hard-working my father was. Very honest man. One of the most honest people I know in my life. Yet doors refuse to open. This man will rise up like this and crash as if God does not exist. They were the ones who trained us in the way of the Lord. I never saw my father carry one bottle of alcohol. Not once. My mother served God. She was so innocent. She didn't know anything about witchcraft. It was Nigerian film that made my mother know that there was something like witchcraft. She was that innocent. Yet nothing changed. But when I engage the blood and I make decrease and this anointing fell from heaven. Are we together now? You see why I said they should keep these bottles here? It's not just because of a ritual. Let me tell you. Except God did not send me. When this oil touches your head, many of you will step into instant visions. Instant visions. Listen. You will... You will see things. All of a sudden, you will start seeing things that had happened before. And God will tell you this is where it started. The same way you go to bed. Hold it for me. Remember while you were doing your prayers. Some of you kept seeing yourself. You were seeing where your problem started from. Secondary school, going back. Seeing a lot of things. Look at the attack that happened. Some of you, all through while you prayed, you never saw anything good night after night because Satan is a master of the flesh realm I told you to just continue and don't mind him the yoke shall be destroyed I remember that anointing oil when I bought it that night I left it open in the presence of God I played Benny Hinn worship from night from, from morning till night soaking everything through my rechargeable and when I did that thing, I was shaking like a leaf. I knew. There was like a physical mist in my room. And all of a sudden, I carried that oil. When that oil touched my head, that was it. I didn't even know where I was again. Alone in that room. I woke up many hours with strange visions. From that encounter, the revelations of ministry. I started writing like a madman. All of a sudden, doors. See, let me tell you. Do you know that everything that you have prayed for was answered but hijacked? By the time this door is open, it's an avalanche. Things would... Look, let me tell you the truth. I'm not joking. You will see people within a short time. A lady that nobody has a business of saying, I want to marry you. The Bible says... 
that how many people will come to you i know he was speaking about men but all of a sudden a brother that was ordained to be your husband but these wicked spirits will blind and make sure that they don't see you by the time this yoke is taken that brother goes to bed this night and God says, what are you waiting for? Your wife has been before you for 10 years. The helper of your destiny standing and watching you like this. But there had been a decree, never help him. And you find out, you will bring a friend, two of you will come to plead for assistance. They will help the friend and leave you. There are some of you here with the kind of anointing God gave you, you should never be small. But you are even wondering why. I never call for people to come and they come. Something drives them. It was Bishop Oyedeko who was saying when Living Faith Church started, as anointed as he was and he is, their heavens were closed and they were fasting and praying. And the Spirit of the Lord told him, come out. And he came out and he looked. And according to him, he said he saw something that looked like a dark, a thick layer of dark cloud. And the Lord told him, this is the blindfolding layer that the devil put in the eyes of people to misrepresent what you are doing. And then he told him to command it and he declared that a light shines in darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it. And he said the, the, the thing just folded like that. And he produced a poster with testimonies and wrote, come and see. That was it. Living faith took another dimension till tomorrow. When I caught this revelation, that was when I saw that publicity was spiritual. At the point I said it, people thought it was a joke. I don't mean to brag. I'm not saying posters are wrong. You go around this city, you are not going to find one poster. But we will shift a meeting just by a simple announcement. Shift it and people will come. You try that and tell people shift it and people say, ah, that's it, I found a reason. There is an anointing. When the yoke breaker comes and sits and his weight rests upon your life, I'm telling you, anything that is not him must give way. Are you ready to pray now? Rise up on your feet. Oh! Oh! Jesus please pray in the name of Jesus I declare that tonight is my night I declare that everything that Jesus Christ did for me on the cross it must be appropriated in my life tonight therefore I declare that every yoke, every spell, every curse, every ordinance speaking against me and against my loved ones, tonight I command that you are leaving me. Open your mouth and pray. Take it, 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 take it,
Listen. This is what will happen. I'm going to pray on this oil. Please listen to the instruction, everyone. Those online, just get a bottle of oil so that while I'm praying, you can connect. If you are with your family members, get a bottle of oil. Even if they are sleeping, just touch their head. Please make sure everybody is touched by this oil. Are we together? If you have faith and you think you will not be embarrassed, you can even, the little oil that is in your hand, you can just place it on your stomach. Ladies, prophetically, you are touching your children unborn to say no devil, no devil. John was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Are we together? Praise the Lord. By the time, by the time this oil, we are going to be fast. Now, because of the way it is, um, we are going to station, I believe, are there tables around outside? Or if there are not tables, at least there, there, are, there are people who will stand. Now, this is what you will do. Please, we are going to coordinate. It's going to be very fast. There might be people falling under the anointing. We'll just help them. Please manage, help the usher so we don't injure anybody. Now, what I want you to do for me, please, just obey instructions. By the time we bless this oil, just a little of it, touch it on your head. If you have a little one, you can touch it on their head and then go back to your seat and start blasting in tongues till we are done. Don't pray anything in understanding. Are we together? Just go back to your seat under the anointing or not. Just find somewhere and pray in the spirit. And by the time I'm done, I'm going to lead us into some serious spiritual prayers and speak over our lives. And then you will go to bed and let's watch the God of heaven surprise you. Are we together? Please, anything that can spoil, carry it out of the way. Please, let's be fast. Father, in the name of Jesus, you anointed me. And Lord, it is time for your people to rise. This is ordinary oil. But in the name that is above all names, the Lord is asking me to put my hands in all the oils. In the name of Jesus Christ, I put my hands prophetically upon every one of this oil. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, let it be an extension of the grace that comes with this office. In the name of Jesus Christ, I place my hand upon this oil. Father, we have had many anointing services in this place. But in the name that is above all names, I command this anointing oil to carry the yoke-breaking anointing. Let it carry the anointing for strange and total deliverance. Whoever must die as a result of this prayer shall to kasabata as this oil comes upon your head except God did not send me a sword of judgment will search for them and bring them to the grave if there is any physical agent that has held your destiny and said for as long as I'm alive you will not move people of God I stand before you and I tell you by the message of the grace that I've received God will not only take away that destiny their life will pay for it in the name of Jesus Christ please cover them strategically father in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit Everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord, as they come under the influence of this oil, I decree and declare that let the fire from heaven not only fall upon their life, but turn every situation that must be changed around. In the name of Jesus, for those online, I pray for the various oils you are carrying in the name of Jesus, as you anoint yourself and your loved ones, let the embargo of darkness, no matter how long it has been, let it break now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please, let's have people, let's have them come quickly, quickly. You can start coming. Um, just coordinate them. I, I honestly don't know how we're going to do it, but we'll have to find a way. Yes, you can find a way of, even if it's for you to come and... 
can start from here and then you come and go or do whatever it is. Please, very, very quickly. Make sure you are praying in the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, listen. Listen. I want you to pair yourselves into two very quickly. Just find someone. Find a neighbor somewhere. In the next, our time is gone, but in the next three minutes, all I want you to do holding the hands of that person is to just blast in the spirit. Just pray in the spirit. Go ahead and pray. Just go ahead and pray. Shabata kata baraka toka shada balala balala. Shabata balala kata baraka. Jesus, lay your hands on your head. Fire is burning in this place. Say in the name of Jesus, I declare in this season, may the glory of the Lord that is upon my head begin to speak now. Open your mouth and pray. Thou, O Lord, are a shield you are my glory you are the lifter the lifter a man's head can be lifted shake it take up to parakatos shabaratoka sadabekata I declare the glory of the Lord upon my head be lifted Hallelujah. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Say in the name of Jesus. Every chain holding my life, tying my destiny. Say it again. Every chain holding my life, tying my destiny by the power of the Holy Ghost. Be broken now. Lift your voice and pray. Every chain, every chain, every chain. Alakato shabakata, rakata sate kato shekete, rekete kete nekete kete bosh. Say 
Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree. I speak to the forces of creation. Hear my voice. Align yourself and cause the word of God to walk in my life. Lift your voice and pray. We speak to the elements of creation and the stars fought for the Bora. And the stars fought for the Bora. And the sun and the moon fought for Joshua. And the earth fought for the woman. We command the elements of creation. Align yourself. Say in the name of Jesus. Oh, Ed, you are the seat of abundance. Say it again. Oh, Ed, you are the seat of abundance. It is out of you that trees grow. Therefore, I declare, according to the law of seed time and harvest, let my harvest locate me now. Lift your voice and pray. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards me. said I am the Lord thy God that teacheth thee to profit and leadeth thee in the way that you should go just do what I'm asking you to do stretch your hands in the name of Jesus I declare that these hands that are stretched towards me right now become the hands of fire In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please put your hand on your belly. Just put that hand there. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Put your hands there. The Bible says, For out of your belly shall flow rivers. Say in the name of Jesus. Every treasure within me, as I lay my hands, I declare come out now lift your voice and pray every treasure hallelujah Hallelujah. We are going to round up. Don't mind all the prophetic acts you are doing. I want you to just trust my leadership in helping you get results. Are we together? Are we together? I'd like you to stand where you are and say in the name of Jesus, I prophesy to the north. Say it, I prophesy to the north. I prophesy to the south. I prophesy to the east. I prophesy to the west. Everywhere my help has been ordained to come from. In the name of Jesus, I call you. Locate me now. Lift your voice and pray. It comes from God, but it passes through men. Send help, O oh God.
Send help, oh God. Send help, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Just place your hand again on your head. Now, you are finished praying. Let me pray now. Any spirit that comes with ancestry, any spirit, hear my voice. You are a product of ancestry, sent and programmed for the, from the fathers to oppress the people of God right now by fire. I declare by fire. I declare by fire. Release their glory now. I declare by fire. Shobakatos katarikato. Embre te kaso pakatadiakata. Every legal ground. I break it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. spirits of delay that sit upon people's destinies so they don't move forward right now in the name of Jesus may the power of the Holy Ghost through this oil you have made contact with command those devils to live now the spirits of barrenness not just biological barrenness that makes that nothing works in your life you study you go and write exams you fail you get money you do business you fail you get a job they fire you in the name of Jesus I command by the power of the Holy Spirit may that devil live your life now and forever Ladies, I'm praying for you now. There is a spirit that draws only married men or wicked, ungodly men to certain sisters. They don't know why. No responsible person comes to you. Shashakatos katabara. Ke protas katabata. Right now, in the name of Jesus, if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is in this category, I command that devil come out of them now. Come out of them now. Come out of them now. Any spirit husband, any spirit wife, any demonic entity manipulating you in the night, coming to oppress you, in the name of Jesus, I declare now, be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. There's anyone here, I say it again. You always have dreams. Seeing yourself in your former house. Seeing yourself in your secondary school. Seeing yourself repeating something you have already done. Shakos kapakatosha. Empre ketas katabarakatosha. Right now, I shift you. Speed to your life. I cause the spirit of delay. Speed to your life. I cause the spirit of delay. Speed to your life. I'm praying for people here. Every year, or every two, two years, or every three, three years, the same pattern repeats in your family. Either someone dies, or someone loses their job, or something happens. Right now, the yoke that creates patterns, I stand in the name of Jesus, and I break it from your life. I break it from your life. By the blood of Jesus, I break it from your life. The 
moment something good is about to enter your hand you go to bed and you have a dream something strange happens and you lose that thing it must find a way of leaving you i pray for you now in the name of jesus everything that makes sure that you see things but never handle them i cast that spirit from your life now i cast that spirit from your life now i cast that spirit from your life now hallelujah I want to pray for you now whatever pattern you saw in your parents and you are seeing it now in your life it could be poverty it could be hardship it could be failure Jesus declared that it is finished by the blood of the eternal covenant he declared that it is finished therefore I stand right now I separate you from any pattern in your life that is tied to your lineage In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray for students. The moment you enter the exam hall, something happens to you that you cannot explain. I pray for you. May the fire of the Spirit separate you from failure forever. Separate you from failure forever separate you from failure forever be patient with me you will thank me for this prayer I'm praying this is what I did for myself we're rounding up Listen, there are people here, it's not delay that you face, but what can be done in two weeks, it will take you almost one year. So it's like you are crawling to achieve things in life. Right now in the name of Jesus, the spirit responsible for that wickedness, I command it to live your life now. Hallelujah. There are people here, you have never had one month in good health. It's a pattern you saw. You can treat malaria non-stop for three years. You can treat headache non-stop for four years. You can treat all kinds of infirmity. That one is no longer sickness. Pay attention, I'm praying for you. It's a pattern. You saw your father live on drugs forever. Your mother live on drugs forever. Now is happening to you. Shakos kabata Right now, in the name of Jesus, may the power of God set you free from that pattern now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray. Please just be patient with me. There are many other things we would not do once I'm done. My conscience, I won't be able to sleep tonight if I don't finish what I'm doing to you. Now, whether you believe in the prayer, put, put down your hands. Whether you believe in the prayer I'm about to pray or not, just be patient with me. Are we together? This is an intense deliverance session. Just pay attention. As you grow in the spirit, I pray that one day you will understand. There's no time to explain everything to you. But I want you to just listen to me and watch what the Holy Spirit does. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. These are the same three elements of covenants. The spirit, the water, and the blood. I'm praying now. If there is anyone connected by witchcraft, spirit entities, dedicated to your life and you were attached with them knowingly or unknowingly he's 
call the father of spirits therefore I decree and declare every spirit connected to you lose them right now and let them go lose them right now and let them go I'm still praying for you listen to my prayer the water is a very strange mystery every water on earth is older than every man is the same water the saints drank that we still drink there is no water that comes from anywhere it's a cycle that repeats itself and the Bible says this thing you see is a witness is a witness therefore I declare in the name of Jesus there are spirits that operate in this domain and let me tell you something truth be told this is only false when it is relative to the power of God the strongest operation in the demonic kingdom are marine spirits listen to me very carefully many ignorant people have no idea of what I'm saying 80% 8 out of every 10 people are tied by this mystery of the spirits that operate in water when the spirits that were casted out of the man in Gadara left they were they drove the swine right into water in the name of Jesus I pray just lift your hands and be silent and let me pray especially for those of you that live around river Rhine areas after today don't worry you can believe anything you want to believe but right now I stand Shakoto Sataka Rekete Kato Shabariata I declare every marine power holding down anyone's destiny in the name that is above all names in this night of deliverance by the fire of the Holy Spirit let them go now any dedications that have to do with marine powers I release you from it now 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 strong spirits they can tie a man's life tie a man's destiny forever they can keep a woman barren for eternity are we together we're rounding up If there is anyone here who has been dedicated to any idol you know that you saw things happen in your family they brought one man or woman of God somewhere or one herbalist and tied your destiny to objects made incisions in your body gave you things to eat and drink in the name of protection I command that covenant and I declare that it is null and void in the name of Jesus it is null and void in the name of Jesus it is null and void in the name of Jesus drop your hands brothers please lift your hands When a man does not find his destiny early when a man does not get established early he said it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth there are many men I, I need to pray for you you don't know the mystery behind your life moving but you are not moving you love God but nothing works you are celebrating birthday after birthday birthday after birthday you are 40 years still in your father's house every time you want to move out of your parents house something happens and ties you down there are even people who are married 
but are forced to still live with their parents. The Bible says, therefore shall a man leave his father and leave his mother. This is a very serious prayer. I'm declaring right now, every gentleman here, the powers that held your father down, that he could not do much in his lifetime, that has held people within your locality, territorially, geographically, in the name of Jesus, every gentleman here, I release you, go and prosper. I release you, go and prosper. I release you, go and prosper. And in case your father or your mother or anybody cursed you and they are now dead, I stand here by this office in the name of Jesus. I reverse that curse over your life now. Maybe as a result of your past, you did something for your loved ones and in anger, they made a pronouncement. Don't say it doesn't matter. I stand in the name of Jesus by the ministry of God's mercy and grace. I speak over your life for every cause that has been pronounced upon your life. I release the blessing of the Lord. 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 I want to speak over everyone's finances here. In the name that is above all names. See, let me tell you this. If you lack financial resources, your life will never move forward. No matter how well-meaning you are. It takes financial resources to do ministry, to do business, to take care of. These are little children here, you see. There are many things. It takes finances to take care of your parents. It takes finances to get a blessing from them. You will need to do something. They will not just bless you like that. He said, make me venison that my heart will rejoice that I will speak a blessing over you. I decree and declare, whatever has closed the doors. And don't think just because you are getting a salary or you are getting something, you will not receive the prayer. Expand your capacity. I pray for you. Whatever has closed the door of financial resources to make sure you perpetually beg, I curse that spirit from your life forever. I curse that spirit from your life forever. Let me pray the last prayer. You love God, but every time you are at a height spiritually, something just happens to you in a way you don't know. It may be a dream. It may be something. And the next thing you open your Bible, you don't even know where to read again. You just close it. You go to prayer and you stand in Jesus' name two minutes. You are not sleeping and you are not busy. But once you can sit down on your phone and before you know it, three hours has gone. But you get up to pray. I will pray. Later on, eight o'clock, I will pray. It's a spirit attacking your destiny because you only prosper as your soul prospers. Therefore, fire upon your altar. Receive it now. Fire upon your altar, receive it now. Fire upon your altar, receive it now. Fire upon your altar, receive it now. I'm praying. There are spirits that manipulate your vision and manipulate your dreams. Is supposed to be an avenue that God will show you things. But of late you found out that everything you have seen and told people got you in trouble. is a sign that something has been hijacked. There is a gift. There is an anointing right now. I purify the workings of the spirit in your life. Let the spirit of error leave your spiritual experience now. Receive grace to see correctly. Receive grace to hear accurately. Finally, every family.
family that is represented here whether they are born again or not the fact that you are here standing representing them in the name of Jesus tonight we pronounce judgment hear me upon every man woman altar and every yoke programmed against your family they perish tonight every shrine every harpalist every priest they perish tonight Father, we give you the praise. Declare in one minute, I am free. Wave your hands and give Jesus thanks. It's finished. Finally. Finally. I can arise again. Listen. When I did what I just led you to, I remember... I went that night and I slept and I began to see strange things. My destiny just opened up from page to page. New levels of the anointing came. New levels of fire. Let me tell you, I want you to sit tight and watch the excellency of light over darkness in the days that follow. This deliverance session will make you respect God in a way you have never done. Believe me when I tell you this. You watch out for the testimonies. You will see open. I'm not talking of testimonies. Tea came, bread came. Testimonies that in one day, the rewards of one year can come to a man. Because the yoke has been broken. Jesus we give you the praise. Father, we declare tonight your people have paid the price to stay this late to see to it that the doors of their destiny is open. Father, I stretch my hands as your priest and I seal this deliverance session in the name of Jesus. Hear me. What you have been delivered from now, you will never be delivered from it again. The door that has been opened for you now. You will never pray for this door to be opened again. The chain that has been broken over your life. You will never have to pray for that chain to be broken again. The grace to enjoy the full benefit experientially of the victory of Christ in your life. I release that grace now. In the name of Jesus. Please give Jesus a hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. Our time is gone. This is your first time worshiping with us here at Koinonia. Hold on, please. If this is your first time, I know that our time is gone. Thank you so much for your cooperation. I don't want to end this service without acknowledging you. What a time in his presence. Wherever you are, aside from those at Overflow 3, please, I'd like you to make your way right inside here. Just stand before me and let me speak a blessing over your life. God bless you. Let's honor them as they come out. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, is this how you honor people? Hallelujah. By the way, let me challenge you. I like you when you go back tonight, no matter how late, receive grace from God to seal your prayer with prophetic pronouncements. I started over you, but you can take, even if it's 10 minutes or 15 minutes, 
just seal this prayer with prophetic announcements and call into your life everything you want to see god bless you please let them all come let's appreciate them as they come hallelujah thank you very much ladies and gentlemen i i love and appreciate and honor every single one of you this is koinonia a meeting put together by eternity network international and i'm honored to have you around thank you for the sacrifice of coming around to round off our deliverance series with us it's been a special series on deliverance and we're trusting god for a great time we want to pray for you i want you to stretch your hands over them saints of god not you the people of god are praying for you let's stretch our hands towards them and bless them koinonia bless them from your heart you are anointed we decree and declare over your life every challenge that stands before you even as we have prayed it will surprise you the way things will change and turn around i declare that every anointing and every grace that must step into your life in this season i declare that that anointing comes upon you in the name of jesus for those of you in ministry fresh anointing you step into a new dimension of results in the name of jesus for those of you who came because you are trusting God for one thing or the other. I release the grace of God upon you. And I command you to prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus. Now I know that it's raining outside. I don't know if there is no place to manage them. We can just find a system. Just follow this lady waving her hands. The lady waving her hands very quickly. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Dearly beloved. I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye